looking to upgrade your Jeep? Who is it, right? right? How would you like to get free gear to make those upgrades happen even faster? Yeehaw. The Jeep Talk Show, the world's most downloaded Jeep podcast, is giving you, the listener, a chance to win big ticket items from brands you know, love, and trust. Want in on the action? We'll be giving away major Jeep gear from big name brands every month. This isn't going to be stickers, hats, and t shirts. We're talking about serious gear that can change your Jeep build in a big way. So listen to the show every week and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss your opportunity to win the Jeep Talk Show's biggest giveaways ever. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show with Wendy. There will be body damage. Jeep Mama. Are you sure? Josh. Yeah, I don't think so. And Tony. I think that's a huge deal. So sit back, strap in, and brace yourself. Nixon Tire USA, we got you. Find out more about the tires that are on the 2021 Jeep Talk Show Gladiator, the Nixon Tire Rodian MTX at NixonTireUSA.com. Hey, the JTS team is here to inform and entertain you about Jeeps. If you're new to the Jeep world or thinking about jumping in and getting your feet dirty, you're in the right place. Whether you're interested in having a unique off-road vehicle ready to hit the trails or that daily driver that is also a weekend warrior, this show is for you. Find out more information about the Jeep Talk Show at jeeptalkshow.com. Hello, fellow Jeeper. I'm Josh, and on this episode of the Jeep Talk Show, I'll be talking about what Jeep is doing to piss me off again by (laughs) regurgitating yet another iconic name badge from the past. It took some big balls to steal a tiny Jeep. I'll have the story in just a minute, and later we'll talk about what's between the muffler and the header. It's all about catalytic converters in this week's Tech Talk. Howdy, it's Wendy, and don't forget, I have my segment Newbie Nuggets on our Friday episodes. You never know what kind of topics I'm going to bring up Hi, I'm Tammy, a.k.a. Jeep Mama, and coming up on Jeep Life, tips for the post-trail ride inspection. I'm Tony, and my legs have finally recovered from the second Jeep Talk Show off-road event. Uh, Everything seemed to be back to to normal by Tuesday. It was a complete surprise to me, and uh, (laughs) I got to get out and get some more exercise. Working uh, working at a desk, uh, not even getting up to go to work every day for two years has uh, created a toll on my legs. Actually, I did a lot better out there than what I expected to, but uh, uh, still, uh, there's got to be some improvement. Local Jeep News, National Jeep News, and news from around the world. It's This Week in Jeep. And next time I go down to Texas, i got to remember the sunscreen. Oh, yes. I'm a little red myself. Well, Jeep, I swear to God, is just doing this to piss me off. Or at least us, the show, entirely. I I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Remember how we've been talking about Jeep soon releasing an all-electric vehicle? Jeep has been saying they're going to do it by 2025. They've been threatening this for a little while now. Jeep's first EV is supposed to be a crossover-like vehicle. Part car, part SUV, but mostly car, as most of them are. What we know is that what we got from the front and back teasers a couple months back of this yellow Honda CRX meets a renegade love child type thing painted in bumblebee yellow. It's just rather hideous if you ask me it dares to have a seven slot pseudo grill up front and it looks to have off-road the off-road prowess of a camry well guess what they're going to call it and i swear to god the naming executives at stellantis are the same unimaginative douche nozzle jerkwads that were at fca who didn't have two brain cells to rub together to come up with an original name badge for the vehicles they were selling Oh, we need to cater to nostalgia and our heritage or history or something or really anything that will help us connect with people so they might buy these hideous vehicles we've aborted from the wombs of our factory. (laughs) Now, they're going to call this little tiny itty bitty smaller than a renegade good for almost nothing all electric wussmobile. Wait for it. Jeepster. What? Oh, no. And wipe away from the annals of history, Jeep's iconic beach cruiser, they regurgitate this nonsensical streaming pile of eco-virtue. Oh, and as if that's not enough, it's also going to be just one of a set of triplets. Josh. You see, this exact same identical vehicle will be sold as a Fiat as well as an Alfa uh. Romeo. <laughs> oh, Josh, sure. I'm, I'm sorry, real quick. You mispronounced yeah. anals. So, I just... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) 
Now, I'm sure that the seven slot, not a real grill, will be replaced with something else to separate the trademark out of it, but still, insult to injury. Yeah. Its bones are made from the quote unquote CMP platform used in the Peugeot Citroën family, so already this thing is pretty much all French, and I think I can already smell it stink from here. This junior Jeepster, as uh, some are already calling it, <laughs> sorry, I just threw up in my mouth a little. It, it is scheduled to hit assembly lines in November this year. The first iteration of this car will be powered by an internal combustion engine, which is expected to be the 1.2 liter Peugeot unit. Oh, doesn't that sound just super fun? <laughs> the electric version is anticipated for production in April 2023, followed by a mild hybrid trim in 2024. Remember my comment about its off-road abilities? Yeah. Well, the CMP platform wasn't designed to accommodate any form of a four-wheel drive or even all-wheel drive drivetrain. So, smaller than a Renegade, made from a Citroën frame, powered by a Peugeot, and boasting just a, as bad of a regurgitated name badge. Oh, and it's only comes in two-wheel drive. Yep. Of course. Definitely not a Jeep. That's disgusting. <laughs> I'm <Isn't> sorry. It? <laughs> you know, I was always looking forward to the future before. I, uh, I'm, done uh, with this. I'm done with this planet. I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, Elon gosh, Musk. It, Take Josh away. Uh, they, they, we, I don't know. There needs to be some house cleaning in the design and marketing department or something. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think there's enough pork chops to tie around the neck of this ugly child to make the dog play with it. Um, it, it I'm sure that they will sell a few units. I'm, I'm sure that this might do well overseas. Uh, I, I just, uh, no. Just no. Thank you. I'll pass. Well, it's it'll never happen, but the first thing you got to do is get fuel prices up to five, six dollars a gallon. Then you start selling these things. <laughs> but it's already up to five or six. I was going to say, we're all hurting there. Oh, what the heck's with you, Tony? You got the, the, you got the joke. You got the joke yeah. on there. Good. It's like $7 <laughs> in California. We're, we're dying out here. It's crazy. So hopefully, uh, you know, this will be a flash in the pan. We won't see it uh, come around all that often. They're not going to sell a whole lot of units. I think the writing is on the wall. We, we shall see. I'll just, uh, I'll say this wraps up the whole story. Anal units. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, a Lincoln, Nebraska business was robbed after thieves rammed into its garage Tuesday morning. Around 8 a.m., officers were sent to CK Power Sports near 25th and Fairfield Streets after an employee called and said that the garage had been rammed into. The employee also told police that several items were missing. I wonder what that employee's car looks like. I'm just saying. No, I'm kidding. Officers arrived and found that the garage door had been damaged. Video surveillance showed that it had been rammed at, at about 5.15 a.m. that morning. The business is missing a red Tyking replica Jeep with a 125cc engine, six motorcycle helmets, a set of car ramps, and a silver 18-foot flatbed trailer. Police estimate that the business had around $1,000 worth of damage and valued the stolen items at around six grand. The investigation is ongoing, and anybody with information is asked to call police at 402-441-6000. Also on Tuesday, someone had crashed a car uh, into a car dealership's garage and drove off with a $53,000 pickup truck. You know, anybody in the Lincoln, Nebraska area who suddenly has a new pickup truck and a lot of body damage to their other vehicle, you may want to contact the authorities. <laughs> God, what is happening People. So this mini um, Jeep is a uh, it's a replica Jeep. So it, it looks just like a, a like an old flat fender, except it's like on a uh, a go kart frame, but it has a twenty five cc engine in it. So it, it's it's miniature, but it will haul ass. Uh, so uh, a lot of fun. Think about uh, power wheels for for big boys. Uh, really cool. I would love to have one of these things. I think it would be a blast to uh, just rally around the neighborhood and stuff. Oh, if it was a lawnmower, it'd be great. Oh, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, because uh, you, you, you I, I'm use sure it you once a week. A, I'm sure you could put a deck underneath that thing, no problem. In, uh, in <laughs> right there. Of, absolutely. Men from, from the neighborhood would go, that freaking asshole. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they'd be so jealous. <laughs> well, his yard sure is uneven, though. <laughs> <laughs> he gets What's with the, all the rocks? <laughs> he gets to go wheeling every week. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this Juniper Dunes Wilderness Area or Juniper Dunes Recreational Area, but uh, it is under fire right now, or actually, I should say it's on fire right now. The Bureau of Land Management has taken over after Franklin County firefighters worked to contain a wilderness fire overnight on Wednesday. 
A burning Jeep sparked what had grown to a 10-acre oh. fire in the Juniper <sighs> Dunes Wilderness Area on Great. Wednesday evening. I wonder if they were trying to weld a fuel line. I'm just saying. I'm just <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Franklin County Fire District 3 was called out to the Juniper Dunes off-road vehicle area around 3.44 p.m. after a Jeep caught fire. The Juniper Dunes wilderness covers more than 7,000 er- acres rather, north of Pasco and Franklin County in Washington State and is divided between an open recreational area, the wilderness acreage, and an area of critical habitat. The flames spread into the wilderness section where firefighters aren't able to bring in heavy equipment such as bulldozers. Instead, they were trying to contain the blaze using crop dusting planes. The planes were dumping water on the fire while firefighters worked digging fire breaks by hand. Fire District Captain Jason Langston told reporters on Thursday that the fire grew to about 40 acres total, but had been contained and the site had been turned over to the Bureau of Land Management. So at least it didn't completely burn down and the uh, the fire was contained to at least somewhat of a smaller area. But 40 acres ain't nothing to shake a stick at. No, that's a lot. Yeah. Wow. Well, Jeeper, if you have a news tip or response to any one of our stories, please let us know what you're seeing or what you're hearing, what you think we should be reporting on. Just head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out how. Hey, coming up in Tech Talk, if you've ever had a question about catalytic converters, Josh is about to answer them. So, Josh, I remember when catalytic converters first came out, we referred to them because they were so damn expensive that it was made by Cadillac. Get it? Oh, yeah, I could, I could get it. Yeah, sure. That, yeah. Could, that was a, yeah. like a 70s Caddy, thing. Caddy, caddies were the top of the top of the line. Yeah, yeah. Why did you become a paid subscriber to the Jeep Talk Show? Jeep Talk Show is in my weekly rotation. Look forward to it every week, each and every Friday. You can be a paid subscriber and help support the show you love, the Jeep Talk Show. I support a great podcast. Been a lifelong Jeeper myself. Continue to learn with each and every episode that I listen to. Just go to JeepTalkShow.com and look for the big yellow subscribe button. Absolutely. If you like Jeeps, anything to do with Jeeps, I like it for the, the technical, clear content, uh, advice, and learning. So we recently had a, uh, what do you call it, uh, Sugar Daddy Sugar Mama uh, purchase, uh, paid subscriber. Thank you very much for that. You should be getting your goodies uh, very, very soon, including uh, two Jeep Talk Show stickers. And uh, we had another one, a thirty nine ninety five dollars uh, uh, membership. I believe that would be uh, Friends oh, with Benefits. Oh, the basic bitch Josh one. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's, uh, that one's less, uh, very much less. So. I didn't- had one less than that gosh dang it how cheap am i <laughs> only you can answer that oh, uh, what, what is it you say twenty dollars just twenty dollars <laughs> um so uh, we've gotten uh, two new memberships here recently maybe more those are the two that i've uh, i've seen here recently and uh, oh by the way uh buy josh's plane ticket send a boy to camp uh, don't don't do that one anymore i gotta take that one off so that that's the one that shows the plane crashing in flames so what thanks for that by the way <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think you Gosh. partially jinxed me on this trip. <laughs> well, there was no fire, though, was there? I mean, unless you started one because you were upset. <laughs> no, though, you should have seen the way I left my first plane trying to get contact the, the connecting flight on my way home. I was it was like I was running from the plane as if it was oh, on fire. Man, oh, oh dear. did you jump over any luggage like OJ did in those yeah. uh, <laughs> commercials? In those Samson? commercials, I, there Simpson? were several Samson? people. I, I had to yell out, you know, like on your left, coming through, you know, stuff <laughs> get like that. Get out of the way, <laughs> I, move. Seriously, I was not going to stop. I yeah, it, it was a absolute. I hate con- um, connecting flights. Absolutely hate them. And actually, John Lee uh, made a good comment uh, on the the Zoom uh, the Zoom call before starting the show. He says, "Yeah, at the end of the day, that's that's really bad for connecting flights because everything that happens in the day in the morning starts getting pushing everything down uh, for the evening." And I didn't even thought about that. I just don't take connecting flights. Uh, but man, when you're trying to get the best price. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sometimes yeah, you have I to. Just, um, I hate flying, period. And Me it, too. And if we had really gone with a cheap flight, you would have uh, been out there at the park on Tuesday. No, actually, you would actually been in Austin on Tuesday and flew back on Thursday. <laughs> I would have missed the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Where, where is everybody? But we've got a good deal on the flight, though. <laughs> <laughs> From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And last week, Josh, you mentioned something about uh, me using my TSA connections to give you a hard time. Uh, I wish I did have some TSA connections. Uh, You are correct. I do work at an airport and I work with TSA on a daily basis. And all I got to say is, you know you're doing it right when they see you coming and they roll their eyes. (laughs) And remember, no matter how bad you think your job is, 
the worst job on this planet is being my union representative. Ooh. I make that guy earn his money. <laughs> but that's not why I'm calling. <laughs> Colin, tell you, if you ever get stopped by the cops and they ask you if you have any weapons in your car, just tell them, no, I prefer to kill with my bare hands. They appreciate the honesty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys and girls, I'll chat you later. Have a good one. Bye. I bet you it would be a lot of fun working with Nick G at the airport. Uh, in measure. <laughs> it's taken in measure. <laughs> Gotta wonder what the uh, what the, the 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 rules on the radio is over there, you know? Because I know oh. they all have comms. And stuff. <laughs> oh, that's just, what sort of crap comes over the comms when Nikki G's on shift? I can just yeah. I can just hear him on the the radio going, but that's not why I'm calling. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got tech questions? Ah, oh, what do I ever? We have answers. Oh, that's good. I can, I can. It's Tech Talk with Jeep Talk. Yahoo! Yeah, I had somebody recently ask me if they needed their catalytic converter and what the hell was the point of those things under there anyways. Uh, catalytic converters are actually used to clean up the exhaust emissions on gas-burning engines, including your Jeep. Earlier two-way catalytic converters are used to combine oxygen with carbon monoxide and unburned hydrocarbons to produce carbon dioxide and water. That's why you'd see a big stream of water come out of the tailpipe in some of those older cars when they take off from a stoplight. In 1981, the two-way converters were replaced by three-way converters that also reduced nitrogen oxides. Now, even the newest catalytic converters will degrade over time. These aren't something that will last forever, but they do last for a good amount of time. But it's not uncommon for higher mileage Jeeps to have a catalytic converter issue of one kind or another. The insides of the catalytic converter can become damaged in a number of different ways. They are pretty robust, though, but they're not indestructible. For instance, if the converter is severely dented from too many third dates with large rocks or banged around too much from impacts, well, you could easily start to see performance loss. Let's say your O2 sensors are going out, or you or the previous owner eh, didn't quite take care of the regular maintenance very well, and well, if there's an overly rich fuel condition, or if the engine is excessively worn or tired and, and allows oil to blow by the cylinder rings or valve seats and into the exhaust system, well, the catalytic converter can start to get plugged up from all this gunk, and it can cause a bunch of problems. Even if you frequently use leaded aviation gas or race fuel, well, these burn differently in the engine than what it was engineered for, was designed for. And although they may provide added performance, it may cost you longevity of some of your exhaust components. Now, sometimes the converter is just worn out. It's seen too many miles and just needs to be replaced. If too much fuel, oil, or the incorrect fuel is pushed through the converter for long enough, well, the honeycomb structure of materials inside of the steel shell can get so hot that they actually can start to melt. Inadvertently banging on or denting the converter can also cause that material to start to break apart. Now, once either of these scenarios happens, the bits can get turned sideways and actually start blocking the exhaust path. A blocked exhaust causes the engine to work much harder than it should to produce the same amount of power and oftentimes can't even reach that number. The more you try to rev the engine, the more air it tries to move, while that blocked exhaust causes the motor to struggle, even higher RPMs will appear to make less power. Think of how well you'd perform at a marathon if you had to breathe through a sock the entire time. Now, sluggish engine performance, reduced acceleration, dark exhaust smoke, the smell of sulfur or rotten eggs from the exhaust, excessive heat under the vehicle, these are all the telltale signs that you have a catalytic converter that needs to be replaced. Oh, and the best part? The newer your Jeep is, the more of these that you likely have, making it a lot more expensive. Starting in as early as 2000, Jeep added pre-cats to most of their exhaust systems, little miniature catalytic converters right after the headers. These were designed to take the load off the main cat under the Jeep further back and reduce those tailpipe emissions even further. Okay, so what do you do if you're suddenly discovered that you've got a blocked up catalytic converter? Well, in a pinch, I've seen people remove the catalytic converter and knock the bits out of the steel shell with something as simple as a pry bar. I've also seen one Jeeper cut a large hole in the converter out on the trail temporarily bypassing the rest of the exhaust. It was ugly as hell and sounded even worse, but you got home. Now, you have to be careful if you decide to go this route as you don't want the hot exhaust directed at fuel lines, brake lines, wiring, the transmission or transfer case for that matter even. It's only a temporary solution to get you home where you should replace the catalytic converter before driving the Jeep anymore. In almost every state, catalytic converters are a requirement. There may be some exceptions depending on how rural the county that you live in is, but for most, it's the law. Not to mention catalytic converters are becoming more and more of a requirement on vehicles that go off-road, even if they're not street legal. 
Besides the tree huggers and eco nuts feeling better about the tailpipe that they're sucking on at the time, a catalytic converter also doubles as a spark arrester. All it takes is for one little piece of burnt carbon buildup to flow through a set of straight pipes and hit that dry, hot summer air only to ignite the grass on the side of the trail, starting a massive forest fire. So it might be a legal requirement for the, tail, uh, for the trail, too, depending on what state or county you live in. Oh, and if you're looking for a great source for parts to, to beat those dealership and parts store prices, because catalytic converters are not cheap, head over to rockauto.com, and I guarantee you'll be able to save some cash on that replacement cat. Be sure to entertain the idea of going after market as well. The cost may be a bit more, but chances are the cats that you buy now will outlast the Jeep. Aftermarket performance level catalytic converters also flow way better giving, uh, over OEM, giving you better performance upgrade at the same time. Shop around and go with something that will both fit your budget and give you a little bit of extra grunt all at the same time. So, so I, have a, I have a question real quick. Yeah, go why, for it. Why are the catalytic converters being stolen? What is the material that they're made of that people are trying to Platinum, isn't it? Yep, resell? it is platinum. It is platinum. Wow. Uh, there, there are other it's things in there as well, but, but platinum is a uh, is, is a catalyst uh, for mm -hmm. a certain chemical in the exhaust. I'm not sure the exact chemistry of it, but essentially that's it. They they take the uh, they cut out the catalytic converter. Um, it is made of steel. It also has the platinum and stuff in it. And they take them to metal recyclers where they are paid a uh, a small fee uh, mm -hmm. for for recycling them. Recycling them. Yes, that's what they're doing. Right. For whatever reason, the uh, Toyota Priuses seem to have a, uh, a much denser supply of platinum inside of that. Apparently, the Prius is so horrible in emissions that it requires uh, a much more uh, substantial catalytic converter than virtually every other vehicle on the planet. Take that, you eco-nuts. Yeah, yes, they but... Ha be, <laughs> they wouldn't be stealing those damn catalytic converters off your precious Priuses so much if your Prius breathed well to begin with. God, I hate those freaking cars. So platinum, well, and, and, and here's driver. the thing: they're, platinum they're so prices low to the per anyway. ounce. Platinum yeah. prices per ounce, and it and mind you, it's down thirty six dollars an ounce today. It's oh. nine hundred and seventy seven dollars an ounce. Oh, that's like a, almost okay. a third yeah. of gold or something like that. that. I mean, it's sense. up there. Yeah, but but seriously, Josh, if the Priuses are hitting getting hit more. They're so low to the ground. How do you get underneath those things without really they, skinny they, they, they bring, Well, they tweakers bring are pretty are pretty skinny yes. as it is. So. Well, that's true. <laughs> I get that. No, they bring a jack. They they will they would yeah. literally jack this thing up. I mean, and they're doing this in Texas. And any felony felony and check this before you shoot somebody. But any felony in Texas can be stopped with deadly force. And I don't is think that uh, is that considered a felony to steal. That's not good a felony now yeah pretty, i don't think that's a felony if it's over two thousand dollars i don't think they're getting that much at the scrap yards for those things no no so. no well how much it costs you because it does cost in uh, the thousands uh, to replace uh, this oh and so what any theft over two thousand dollars in the state of texas is considered a felony oh my goodness you look it up before you start shooting people but that's my understanding <laughs> holy cow so, check your do not try this this is this is what's wrong with california we need that law well, Jeez. I mean, aren't they selling things for over five hundred dollars or something because they've passed an ordinance or something that says that if it's under five hundred, don't they don't call the police? It's nine nine hundred. Yeah. Nine hundred. Okay. Well, yeah. there was uh, I heard something on the on the news today. There's a, a police department somewhere that just isn't responding to most calls now because they've blown through their entire fuel budget already. Oh, sure. And so they they're like, well, we can't fuel the cop cars, so uh, I oh. guess you're on your own. Isn't that nice? Yeah, hmm. yeah isn't that wow. nice? Wow. Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> Sorry. Get, had to do get it. yourself armed and trained, people. That's all I'm going to say. Make sure you get trained. In the meantime, if you've got anything to add to Tech Talk <laughs> or you have a topic or a question for Tech Talk, something you think I should be covering here, just jump over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to send us a message and let us know what you're thinking about. Oh, real quick, I was going to mention, uh, I think it is actually illegal to gut your, your catalytic converter. And you could be fined yeah. or something. Well, so you, what you should do is whenever you're taking uh, those pieces out of there, throw a few small pieces in your muffler. That way you can just say, oh, it was shooting out crap for days, officer. And uh, <laughs> they'll have some proof that it actually was passing through. <laughs> yeah, catalytic converters, I think, more oftentimes than not, are welded in place. They're not something that can just be unbolted, per se. So uh, 
you, you know, if you, if you go to take yours out, it's going to be cut out and you're going to have to uh, clamp it back in uh, if, that, if that's the route you're going. So it's, this isn't exactly something that's like changing a tire. No. Uh, it's going to require some work uh, and, and replacing it is, is going to require you going and, and having it welded in or or you're gonna well, have to get. Green. I just I just bolted mine back on the the XJ. Hundred dollars yeah, for the, the catalytic the one, converter. Yeah, the one that I uh, replaced on my last Honda. Uh, I think it was like around 150, 160 bucks or something like that. Uh, just jacked up the side of the car, cut that old one out, and and a couple of band clamps, and this one was was good to go. Exactly. All right, it's getting exciting. Thursday is coming up, and the big interview with Matt from Matt's Off-Road Recovery coming up this Thursday, episode 625, and then uh, in two weeks, episode uh, 629, Cody Cameron with BridgeCom Systems. You know, uh, communications was very important uh, to us during the uh, second annual Jeep Talk Show uh, Off-Road event, and, uh, you know, what better uh, place to go and have a look at what's available at BridgeCom Systems. Check them out. You might uh, be surprised what you see there. Tony, I'm going to make a prediction right now. Episode 625 will be our most downloaded episode ever. Oh. I hope so, because that I was be really awesome. excited about getting Matt on, and I, I think it's that good. Uh, and I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about Matt. I think it was very interesting. I especially liked hearing uh, all the work that he does uh, monitoring YouTube stats so he can make sure he tunes oh, yeah, cause his you got YouTubes. I'm all glued to the metrics on this show like at all times. So you got your finger on the pulse of this. That's for dang sure. Are you living the Jeep life? From mall crawlers to weekend warriors, from daily drivers to weekend wheelers, it's all about the Jeep life, and it's all good. It's time for Jeep Life with Jeep Mama. So with this latest Jeep Talk Show off-road event we just had, I know some of you had... A long drive home in your Jeeps. And one thing that is very important after you wheel is the post-trail checking. Off-roading is tough on a vehicle, and off-roaders regularly push their vehicles to the limit, putting stress on even those beefed-up aftermarket components. And even if you stick to just casual fire roads, you should get in the habit of performing regular maintenance checks after every off-road trip. So the first thing you should do is wash your Jeep, especially the undercarriage. Get under your hood and hose out that engine compartment. Cleaning your vehicle is not only going to help protect the exterior of your vehicle, but it's also going to make it easier to spot any problems once you get all that mud and dust off your Jeep. Number two, check your tire pressure. Do it again the next day, and I would keep doing it a couple days after that because as the tire pressure drops, the air inside cools down and also checking your tire pressure you'll you might notice that oh my gosh it keeps getting lower and lower and you could have some sort of maybe your valve stem is cracked or you have some deep cuts in your tire and you're also going to want to check your tires for those also check the lug nuts see if any are missing that has happened before and you might want to just check to make sure they're tightened Number three, examine the differentials and the transmission for any damage or leaks. Many off-roaders use heavy-duty covers on their differentials, but sometimes dented covers can leak. And if you've been in deep water, check the fluid for that milky white cover, which means water contamination, and you're going to need to change that oil. Check your shocks for any damage, such as deep dents or leaks, including the bushings and mounts. One of my shock mounts broke on a super easy trail because these shock mounts take on a lot of stress, especially those factory ones. Number five, if you've been in deep sand, water, or mud, inspect your brake drums for mud or sand. Inspect, inspect your brake lines, especially if you've lifted your Jeep, your stock vehicle, and you still have those stock brake lines. Those brake lines are too short, and sometimes they get stressed from overextension. You don't want to be losing braking power unexpectedly. Larger tires are tough on those axle components, such as your ball joints, your knuckles, and your shafts. So number six, check all of that over carefully for any signs of stress, such as cracks or bends. You'll probably want to jack up your vehicle and give a good tug on your wheels to check for wobbles and wiggles and looseness. Number seven, your suspension components like your track bar, your control arm, springs, bump stops. Check for any signs of wear or damage. 
Look to see if any components are rubbing against each other, which you can tell usually by shiny metal. Get underneath your Jeep and, ex and inspect your suspension and the steering components for damage, excessive wear. Check all the nuts and bolts. Wiggle things around while you're under there. Number eight, grease any joints and bearings that need greasing, including your U-joints and drive shafts, if they're greasable. If you're not sure what takes grease, look for those little small grease zerk fittings. That indicates that part needs greased regularly. Number nine, check your frame for cracks, especially along the weld lines and high stress areas. Number 10, hard use and dust causes engine parts to wear out faster. So take a good look under the hood for any leaks. Check your hoses, your belts, your clamps. Look for anything that's loose and replace parts that are worn. Check your fluid levels and inspect the fluids for any water contamination if you've been in deep water. Check your radiator to make sure it isn't damaged, leaking, or clogged with mud. Inspect your air filter, especially if you've been through a lot of dust. Number 11, if you have a winch and you used it, take the time now to re-spool it so it's ready the next time. And finally, number 12, your recovery gear. Clean your recovery gear. If it's wet, make sure you dry it out. And this is a good time to reorganize your tools, restock, replace any gear that you've used on the trail so you're ready for your next outing. Did I miss anything, guys? No, the only thing I would add, Tammy, because this is an excellent list, by the way. So you're, uh, all the listeners should actually print this out and use it as a checklist. Such so good information. Is if you adjusted your mirrors, We'll use our side mirrors a lot for yep. pointing them down a little bit when you're doing rock crawling so you can actually see a little better. So you would want to make sure that those are back. But that's probably done at the end of the trail as opposed to back home because you'd realize that your mirrors were not adjusted right. properly. But like, that'd oops. be about it. So, yeah. Thanks, Wendy. Well, how does Tammy's Jeep life compare with yours? We're always looking for Jeep stories, so contact us and let us know what your Jeep life is like. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out how. And don't forget, Jeeper, we want you to sign up for the Jeep Talk Show newsletter. And I think you're going to want to sign yourself up as well. Hey, sign up the friends as well. Oh, Grandma's going to love this newsletter. Trust me. <laughs> Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. You're going to find a link to click and sign up for it. You're going to get one email, a link from, uh, one email a week from the Jeep Talk Show. And we're not going to spam you. That's all you get. It's not from a third party. It's directly from us. We don't even sell your information. It's strictly for this newsletter. You're going to get inside information about what's coming up on the show, who we're interviewing, what we're giving away, when, all that kind of stuff. All the good stuff you ever wanted to know about the Jeep Talk Show, it's all in the newsletter. Go check it out right now. Sign up for the Jeep Talk Show newsletter today. Well, that's all the Jeep Talk Show there is for now, Jeeper. Until our next show, be sure to spread the word about the Jeep Talk Show. We may even reward you for recording the reaction of a complete stranger when you do it. And as always, thank you for listening to the world's most downloaded Jeep Podcast. Oh, it's just a word of advice. Remember to set a timer if you use our Discord server on the toilet. <laughs> just saying. Nobody wants to see you scratching and digging later on. Oh, God. I've been guessing since 2010. We now join the Zoom people already in progress. Uh, Whoever scratching. Where you, you, how are you guys doing? <laughs> Good. Tony, hey, you're everyone. totally screwing up our conversation, Tony. If you guys could just knock that off, that'd be fine. Go okay. do your show someplace else. <laughs> no we don't want your kind <laughs> here. Your kind around here. Exactly. <laughs> so, Chuck, uh, while I was shopping at uh, Sam's Club, I think it was on Wednesday, I told my wife, I said, where are the big cans of ketchup? I want to take that out there for... Uh, <laughs> For Chuck steaks, yeah. <laughs> and oh, put a bow gosh. on it. No, and all of it did said you, nope. Did you bring it? No, no. They, they couldn't oh, find it. Better ketchup on steak is really yummy. Oh, I love it. <laughs> when you're when you're like eleven, maybe. Yeah, I, mean, maybe. I still like it. Well, mentally, I think mentally we're all there, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know, I got I got people to come over and and you know they they're immediately great. Where's the salt? Where's I don't even put salt and pepper on the table. Uh, where, where's the salt? Where's the pepper? And it's like for. For yeah. what? 
Oh, yeah. put some on on, on yeah. the steak. I was like, have try you it first. Eaten a bite yeah. yet? Have like, you even eaten it? Try yeah. my meat. My yes. my wife always <laughs> says that. That's By the way, who got? Uh, I like John's meat. Where where'd that T-shirt go? Did Andrew take that home with him? That was yeah, good. I'm pretty sure Andrew's got it. <laughs> there are some great funny. shirts at that event, by the way. I'm just saying. <laughs> the- Every now and again, I turn around like, wait a minute. That that uh, that shirt was made for this event. Yeah. Where did that come <laughs> from? <It's- laughs> I love it. <laughs> too good, too good. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Josh, Chuck's uh, Josh, uh, got a uh, one of the Jeep Talk Show uh, shirts I had made up. The, yeah, he got the, one of the uh, the red, white, and blue, the, yeah. the American flag version. Yeah. Which- it turned out nice. I, I'd say if there's any shirt that we add to the store for a uh, a regular uh, uh, regular item, uh, that would be the one to to bring in the season and desist. Yeah, and and as a good father, <laughs> Chuck said, "Where's mine?" <laughs> <laughs> well, I I t- I just took his and cut the sleeves there off. And I wear <laughs> perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! To get the staff infection shirt, it's here to throw empty ear here. That's right. You got a staff infection. <laughs> I thought those shirts are funny too. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Yeah, Absolutely great. Yeah, I wear that. I I just wear that to bed though. I think of you, Tony, when I wear it to bed. <laughs> <laughs> With the infection part. <laughs> I, I love. Uh, I can just, I can just yeah. imagine the the conversation. Is your phone muted? And take off that damn shirt. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? Uh, I can't say. Because <laughs> they're staff infections. Yeah. <laughs> did anyone, that, did y'all man. notice anybody coming up and talk to you guys? Because you had the staff shirts on. Did it give you a little power? Were you able to push the ranger around a little bit? As if. Well, but we did get a lot of. Uh, where are we going now? Like, when are, when are we heading back out to the trails uh, on Saturday afternoon? Yep. Oh yeah. Someone with yeah, this, power. Yep. The only guy who asked me any questions because I had the staff shirt on was uh, the Air Buddy guy. He goes, "Hey, you got a you got staff shirt on? Can I hand out cards?" Like, well, Tony was talking you up. Let her eat. Go ahead. Sure, sure, yep. sure. No, I told him to. Co- that was Sam. I told him to come out there and show his show the tank and stuff. I thought that it was a oh, I a chatted really with him for for a good hot minute. Good. I, did. I didn't. Was, I didn't have a chance to other than when we were waiting to go off on the road. I made on the friends road. with his dog and everything. It was yeah. great. Yeah, I did, I did that. Yeah, I definitely did that. So, uh, but yeah, I didn't get a chance to look at the look at the tank up for, uh, up close though. We should have done a, 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 a PSI. Off with, he's with that tank. With that. Uh, sorry, sorry, Aaron. I was stepping on you there. Go, go uh, say that again. But no, we forgot we were going to do like an air off with that tank. Oh, that would have been we cool. Had, we had several power tanks out there. So just kind of, you know, front tire, back tire, same pressure. Let's start and and see if it's the same. Yeah, that would have been fun. Like I said, I got to do about 10% of the things I wanted to do. I was too busy eating all that great food. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of good food. So I'm sorry that there was that food. much food that had to go back to Kansas uh, with them. Though. Oh, I, no, that was the uh, that was just uh, poor planning on uh, our part, Josh. We should have loaded up the uh, the, the bunkhouse. <laughs> um, so I think that next year we're going to have a no no f- uh, shoes, no shirt, no service policy. <laughs> Please, <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> and, and tires that were made in this century on all vehicles before you had. Now out. wait a minute. No, I'm. Uh, sure. I don't care what you say, John. I'm showing up regardless. <laughs> I was talking about you. I was talking about the next day. Hey, <laughs> does that uh, mean Josh we're going to start uh, event inspections? Oh, that's a great idea. Interesting. Interesting. I'm not not necessarily opposed yeah, will, to that, will, but uh, uh, uh run, run what you I run. am. Yeah, I was I was I was that's that's what I was reaching I was reaching for that. Yeah. I was like, I know it I know it rhymes. It's like you know, run what you bring or no, that's not it, and then you said it, yeah. Yeah. Run what you bring. Yeah, if if you guys start doing if you guys start doing inspections, RM Cattle is never invited again. <laughs> I was going to say, it failed well, from the we're start. We're not going to expect the beat. That's all that matters. Yeah, exactly. But Chuck, Chuck said earlier that uh, that his son, Josh, didn't even have all the shocks mounted on the on the little willies. He was missing one of the shocks. What? Well, he was only running three shocks on that thing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you only need one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he 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 did just okay. I mean, I I did look at him and like, really, you have sand in your gas tank, and you came anyhow. And he goes, ah, it'll all it'll all buff out. 
Oh like, well, gosh. I guess it did. I mean, she was. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he, the trail. <laughs> he got it fixed and was yeah. uh, was uh, hitting the trail in that evening. Yeah. 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 And, and, nice. So, and do you know that last shelf we were on, Tony? That everybody's having a tough time that Garrett shows how to get up? Right. Yeah, behind me is proof that you can get up pretty easy in the, in the dry. But it's not all. Oh, let it go, man. You had your chance and you failed. Oh, oh geez. <laughs> yeah. Man, 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 you'll go out there and you make it up that thing like three times, and you'll go out the fourth time, and no matter what you do, you well, just can't. It, it had yeah. to been it had God. to been wheelbase because that the 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 two door had no problems at all. I mean, just well, it straight up. Me, neither did the four door JKU that came up afterwards. But you know, he went the the throttle down, hammer it, and as long as it doesn't. Yeah. Completely apart. I mean, no, I was, no. I think that is a problem when you have to potentially damage your Jeep to get up a. a, a, a I mean, yeah, you can do a lot of things given speed and uh, uh, and potential damage. But uh, the way uh, Carrot did it, it was just it was very controlled and you know just went straight up. It. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong on that, Garrett, but it just seemed to go straight up. Yeah, it wasn't too hard. I just put the lockers on and I was like, hey, I'll try because i don't want to put it in reverse because my reverse was messed up so. oh wow. everybody would know that <laughs> so you had to be motivated you were motivated to, to make it the first time <laughs> right right that's right. it but but you know i mean i guess the guy that went up there in the jku he was the one that fixed the clink 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 but not the pop pop, pop. Oh, <laughs> that's right it was that was right that down man Brayden. that was noisy that the was scary my favorite I, you know, I have awesome. I have uh, PTSD from uh, chain slipping on a transfer case, and that's what I thought it was. <laughs> oh, he, he came out with a whole shifter cable. He's like, I'm gonna go swap this out real fast. I can't. As he did the he whole did it like five minutes on. later. Hey, look at what wrong was with the, with the thing. You know, it's like holy crap. I was I was, That's why I love that guy, man. Like he he just showed up. Like, hey, no big deal. I'm just gonna do a transmission swap real quick, and we're gonna get on the trail. And you're like, holy crap. <laughs> You're hey, awesome, man. What, what happened to was the ranch it? Anytime. What was it? War paint? War wagon? What happened to him? I didn't see him on the the run there in the evening. Did did we? Well, no, he, was, no. he, he, had to to he had to go back to San Antonio, so he had to. He left uh, after the main run, but he didn't go back out for the TRO run. Okay. Yeah the the FBI right. called him back. Yeah he he hung around until Josh. Uh, he he hung around until Josh's Jeep was up and running. Uh, he actually went and looked for parts for Josh real quick. Then once Josh's Jeep was up and running, he said he had to split. Which you know that that really speaks volumes of of uh, War Paint uh, or Dan or whatever you want to call him. I had never met that guy ever. And when Josh's rig broke down for the second time because the fuel was bad, he stuck right next to our side because he knew the area. And I got on the horn with John and I said, "Hey, you guys keep going because." It's not about us. It's about the show. Just you, you just go go with everybody else. John said, "Are you you sure?" And I said, oh, "Absolutely, we'll be fine." Dan comes up to us and he goes, "Well, I'm going to stick with you." And I said, "Well, good because I don't know how to get back to camp." You know, <laughs> and he, he he would not leave us. He actually gave us the he gave Josh the the uh, what is those straps that help people? It's not like a chain. It's not like a log chain. Bubble rope. The, the, yeah, the bubble rope. He said, "You put this in your passenger seat." He said, so if uh, if you do, you know, if the fuel thing happens again, he says, I'll just get right back on you. So I followed. He led. Josh was in the middle. And Perfect. that, I mean, when you meet guys like that, I mean, that he, he'll be my friend now for the rest of my life. If I ever see him again, you know, he's a friend. It's just how it is. It's he, real, real he, cool. He's actually uh, uh, on an interview. Tony got him on one of the interviews. And did that. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Yeah, he's one of the, one of the interviews uh, com- coming up, or he's already been out, been on. I think he's been on. No, he, he's well. You've interviewed him, but he hasn't. You haven't published it yet. It's oh, not okay. One of the been out, yeah. I didn't even have a spare whenever I tried that either, because I gave it to the XJ guy because he yeah. got roof with that. Well, and that's what I was talking about on the tires, because whenever I, I walk back there, because he hit that thing so hard, blew his tire out and everything else. And, I started walking back down the trail. I'm telling everybody bypass because you know we're going to be out there until midnight if we didn't kind of set it up. So I was kind of telling everybody to go up the bypass, and uh, we thought he was just going to try to lift it back out of there with no tire. So it was a good thing you had one. Seriously, yeah. That, I mean that 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 really speaks volumes of you too, Garrett. My actually, my wife was saying something about that because you know we we're just kind of hanging out and waiting, and she says, "Did he just give him his tire?" And I go, "Yeah." She goes, it, it, that reminds her of back when 
we lived in Northern California and, and kind of the older, older days of Jeep. And, and uh, she goes, that that's just how it's supposed to be. She says, they don't know each other. They'll never see each other ever again. But somebody just said, Hey, you, you need this. I've got it. We'll see you on the flip side and we'll get it back maybe. Or if not, then whatever. Well, yeah, it's a, that was real cool. There was a whole movie done about that. The pay it forward uh, movie. Yeah. I don't know what that is. <laughs> is that on? Is that on that talking box inside the house there? <laughs> yeah, this, box. this this is the one that have they have the big screen and you sit in the the chairs and you uh, threaten people when they don't shut the hell up or get off their phone. Yeah, that's ch- is that church? <laughs> it can be. <laughs> it can be. <laughs> Remember that thing that you had sitting out on the porch? We were watching all those old uh, videos. You know, one of those. That was great. One of my favorite moments of that of that of that whole trip. That was a good Saturday night too, because I mean, we just kind of hung around, watched the videos, and then hell yeah, leaned on the scrambler and talked shit until my wife got angry. I didn't call her, and then I had to bail. Yeah, she got over it though. It'll be all right. Oh yeah, she was fine the next morning. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't help yeah. that when uh, she called my uh, my daughter who was in, still in the room or whatever. Where's dad? Oh, he's out there drinking beer with his buddies. God. <laughs> <great>. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Anna. You, yeah, you didn't you didn't prep her, man. You got right. to prep the, Oh, he's sleeping or he's going to the bathroom. No, no. <laughs> Brutal honesty is what you will get. <laughs> well, it was like one AM yeah. when all that stuff happened too. It was I it was all on me. I it was funny because I dropped her off. I was like, Oh, I'm gonna give her a call on my way back over and whatever and I uh I forgot. Well, the time the time moves when you're having fun, and we were having a, a good conversation and uh, enjoying oh, yeah. all the lies that were being told. You know the standard stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Well, then, that's all right. And then reality John, hits. John, yeah, yeah. Late, late, later that morning, John, my Marilee, my my wife, she comes out of the Chuck's Corner little room or shanty or whatever that is, and it's like Josh, Bill. Tony and I were all sitting out there just shooting the shit. And she comes out and she goes, hey, it's 2 a.m. I'm like, okay. She goes, you have to drive the semi all the way home. Tell your friends to go home. You're like, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, you're, 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 not, you're not wrong. Tell your friends to go home. <laughs> Tell your wrong. friends to go home. Yeah. Get them in now. Yes, mother. <laughs> We're turning off the street light. I'm surprised uh, she didn't come out and say, is John yeah. Lee out here? He needs to call his wife. <laughs> <laughs> She's got the FBI calling everybody, right? Dan was going to be calling me before long. Yeah. 